Welcome to the Real Estate Real Success Podcast, where we talk about key business successes and lessons learned along the way in the hopes of inspiring brokerage owners and managers to find new ways to grow their business. I'm Chiyoko Kikino, and in this episode, we're going to talk about the decisions, the process, and everything that goes into open your own real estate brokerage. I'm excited to be joined by Julie Roberts. She is one of the owners of Century 21 Integrity in Sudbury, Ontario. Julie, thank you so much for being with us. I'm, I'm super excited to talk about your journey to brokerage ownership. Thank you for having me, Chiyoko. I'm really excited. Awesome. So why don't we start off, Julie, by you giving us a little bit of background on your um, on yourself and, of course, your journey in real estate. Sure. So I was born and raised in Sudbury, Ontario, but I did go away to university in Fimi, Ohio. So I did have a hockey scholarship. And I have to say that at, at that time in my life, I was definitely more interested in playing sports than thinking about a career. But I did graduate with a four-year degree, and my major was hospitality management. So, you know, from the start, I knew I wanted to go in an industry where I was able to help people or make people happy and leave a positive impact on their lives. So eventually, I did move back to Sudbury, and I did work in a hospitality business for quite a few years. And I also worked as a wellness coach in a chiropractic clinic, um, but Eventually, in 2010, I was hired at a brokerage here in Sudbury as a receptionist. And I have to say, at this point, I still wasn't thinking about real estate as a career, let alone owning my own brokerage. I mean, I was 28. I still hadn't bought my first house yet. But fast forward 11 years later with this company, and I was now a broker of record. And I literally worked every single position in a company and ended up obviously doing my course. So in 2014, I got my sales representative's license. In 2018, I did my broker course and received that license. But the whole time with this company, I was more focused on running the day-to-day -day of a brokerage, and I was a non-selling manager. So that's basically how I got into it. <laughs> You've done everything. <laughs> From wellness to being an athlete in real estate, you probably need it all, right, to uh, to run your own brokerage. So um, just to summarize, so you got your broker's license in 2018. In your opinion, other than, of course, needing it to open your own real estate brokerage, what are some of the benefits of uh, getting a broker's license? And what advice would you give realtors if they're going to consider getting their own broker's license? Well, the broker course really builds on your knowledge and experience you have as an active realtor. That being said, it does focus on the intricacies of opening a brokerage, uh, the day-to-day -day operations, the roles and responsibilities of the personnel and staff uh, within a brokerage. But it does also focus, well, from what I remember, I don't know how the course is through Humber College, but through Oria, they did also teach business management principles. Again, more in a concept of the brokerage. However, these are teachings that can easily apply to your business as a realtor. So especially for you know, sales reps out there that maybe don't have that business background or business experience, I think it would be uh, especially beneficial for, for them. But also at the end of the day, it does give realtors a better understanding of how and why brokerages are run a certain way. So, I mean, it's not a bad thing to learn. And for a few hundred dollars, well, I mean, it might be, it might be more now, but <laughs> no knowledge is power. So I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, I love that. Knowledge is power. It totally is. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about C21 Integrity? You know, you joined the C21 family early this year. So why don't you give us a little bit of background on, uh, on your brokerage and the markets in which it operates in? Sure. So my business partner, Tasha Carrier, and I opened our brokerage in February of this year. So we are now up to 11 agents. We signed up a new agent last week. So we're just waiting for her license to come through. So we will be 12, hopefully by the end of the day. Um, but our market, so for anyone listening that maybe doesn't know where we are, we're about four hours north from the GTA. Our population is about 165,000. And our board, which is the Sudbury Real Estate Board, we have about 450 agents. Oh, wow. But we serve a really big area. So Sudbury spans about 3,200 square kilometers. So we really are covering, you know, a huge area. And we do everything from residential, commercial. We have a lot of recreational and rural properties as well. A lot of camps. And no, in Northern Ontario, we don't call them cottages. They are camps. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, so you name it, we probably deal with it. So right now, our market, well, the last few years, we've seen a big influx of people moving up here from Southern Ontario. Uh, you know, people didn't want to be cooped up in condos anymore during lockdowns, wanted to live mortgage free, you know, they can work and live from anywhere. And uh, our city is really, it is affordable. We are still, you know, below the national average sale price. So to give you uh, an idea, at the end of September, if I remember the stats right, uh, Korea had, I believe it was about 640,000 was the national sale price average across the country. And our price was about 449. So it is very, and a very affordable city to live in. Now, again, just like everybody else, the last few months, the market has shifted. Our months of inventory have creeped up now to two months of inventory. So we are still in a seller's market. However, you know, things are slowing down. Things are sitting longer on the market and we're seeing less and less competing offers. Great. Well, thanks so much for that background. I didn't actually know there is that many realtors in the Sudbury and surrounding areas. Like that's, yeah. that's a lot. <laughs> I think we think about Sudbury and not to be offensive, but you know, just, you know, it's a small town. So it's, it's really like, it sounds very vibrant. So I haven't been there. I have been there before, but I haven't been there for many years. So I definitely going to have to go back and visit you. Yes, sometime. you will definitely have to come visit. Yeah, absolutely. So as you've gone through this journey in your career, when did you know that you wanted to open your own brokerage? Well, as I mentioned, I previously worked for another brokerage for 11 years before this. And uh, the my boss at the time, well, I was going to say grew, maybe that's not the right word, but had prepared me to eventually be the successor of that business, you know, further down the line. But in March of 2021, he unexpectedly passed away. Um, so that plan was kind of put in motion a lot sooner than I figured. But I decided at this point that I did want to partner up with Tasha. It wasn't something that I wanted to take on on my own. So Tasha and I soon started to negotiate the purchase of the business. Long story short, it didn't work out. So I was forced to make a difficult decision of, you know, do I stay and work for whoever the new owner is going to be? Or do I move on and start my own brokerage? And I have to say at the time, it was a very difficult decision because of all the, you know, great relationships I had with the agents. Uh, you know, part of me felt like I was letting them down or leaving them behind. But I knew that I had gained so much knowledge, experience and confidence that I, I was ready to open up my own my own company. Well, the lucky thing is that, you know, all those realtors are still in your town. So the ones that you have strong relationships with, you'll continue to have strong relationships with, Absolutely. right? That's a good thing yeah. about friends. <laughs> yes, yeah, very true. <laughs> so what are some of the things that you had to consider when deciding to open your own brokerage? Because I'm sure there's so many things that are going through your mind. What are some of the key things that you had to decide on? So many things, but the ones that really stand out are, so number one, did we want to go with a franchise or be an independent company? We knew from the start that we wanted to be with a franchise. You know, we thought it was important to be with a brand that had a good reputation, that had been around for a long time, and that would provide us and our agents with the support, the tools, and the tech needed to run a successful business. We also had to consider, you know, bricks and mortar. Did we want an office? You know, we all know with COVID how things changed dramatically and, you know, more people are doing Zoom, more people are working from home, uh, things like that. And, uh, you know, so that was something that we considered. We knew we did want an actual physical office space, but it was where do we want the location to be? How big do we want the office to be? How much do we want to spend? You know, what fits into our budget? Um, so we did consider that our partnership. You know, that was one thing as well. You know, do we have the opportunity to bring somebody else in on a partnership with us? Do we even want to do that? You know, what does our partnership look like? Uh, and then, of course, the finances and the upfront costs. So, you know, do we need to get a business loan? Do we need a line of credit? I mean, luckily, we were both in a position that we were able to uh, inject cash in a business ourselves. But, you know, it's smart to get a line of credit if you ever need it. And then those upfront costs or initial costs that you're going to encounter, and we may not have thought about all of these, but I made a little list in case anybody's listening and they have yeah. a list. So I'm going to run through a few of those if that's okay. Absolutely. This is why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> things that you need to consider are, you know, the cost of purchasing the franchise. 
Um, applying for your brokerage license through RICO. So, I mean, not there's a cost to everything, right? Applying or registering your brokerage with your local board. You're going to incur lawyer and accountant fees. If you do decide you want a physical office, well, you're going to have to pay the first and last month's rent. Now you have an office. If you need to buy furniture, you know, luckily we were able to take over a sublease where we had all the furniture included, but if you don't have that, you know, you need to, you know, supply the office, you need equipment, you might need computers, you might need TV screens, photocopier, all of those things. Uh, you need software to run your brokerage. Uh, that costs money to get that set up. Uh, the signage. The signage, I could not get over how expensive signage was going to be. So we did not opt to go with that LED lit up sign uh, because with production, installation, uh, permits, it was going to be upwards of $10,000. Who would have thought? But something to consider. And then everything else, right? You, you know, you need to bring in the internet. Um, you need to set up a bank, bank accounts, right? So that's going to cost you money. Are you going to, you know, staff? You know, are you going to hire somebody right out of the gate? Do you need an answering service for after hours calls? So these are some of the costs and things that we had to sort of think about up front uh, and things that we considered before we opened our brokerage. Right. So let's talk a little bit more about the finances, because I know that we were having a conversation and you said, you know, it's really important for people to make sure that they have those finances available. You know, we say at Century 21 that a a broker or someone that wants to start a real estate uh, franchise should have at least six months, um, you know, capital to ha- to survive at least six months with no revenue coming in, right? So take all your operating expenses and make sure that you have that available. Um, and I know that you gave, you talked about so a key thing is to, you know, go and secure that, you know, that that loan of that line of credit ahead of time, right? Because it's so important to get that done prior to you walking through, you know, kind of the later steps. So do you have any additional hints on that? Uh, well, it's definitely easier to secure a line of credit or funds when you have money. <laughs> um, you know, so we were told that originally by the bank, you, you know, they said, you may not need this line of credit now, but we're looking at your company and you guys have injected cash. So there is cash in the account now, but who's to say that six months from now or in the winter when you guys may need to tap into that line of credit, if there's no money there to show, like we're probably not going to approve you for a line of credit or give you a loan. So definitely I would say get it done as soon as you can. And same thing with credit cards. If you want to have credit cards, you know, to buy supplies or whatnot, same thing. Uh, get it done as early as possible because, you know, God forbid anything happens and you are in a financial crunch, even, you know, a lot of times in the winter, it is tough for a lot of brokerages. Um, You want to make sure that you're not struggling and you have those funds and those resources in place just in case. Excellent. Well, let's talk a little bit more about some of the key things you had to do. You talked about all the things that you had to consider. What are some of the key things that you had to do? You know, some of those action steps you had to take that you had to tackle in order to open up your own brokerage. So first thing was securing a franchise and going through the vetting process. So excuse me, once we decided to go with Century 21, it was almost like applying for a job, but more in depth. So we had to submit a resume, you know, references, Um, You had to complete a very thorough application. Um, You had to submit a business plan. And I'm sure, you know, most of you have had to do that as a realtor as well, Well, or you should anyways have a business plan, but that was very thorough as well. You know, we had to forecast our numbers. We had to have our budget in there. We had to talk about our recruiting goals and how we were actually going to recruit agents, who we were going to recruit. We had to talk about our retention plan. Uh, marketing as well. So that was all in the business plan that we submitted uh, for that vetting process. Other things, other steps we had to do once we got approved by Century 21, then we needed to apply for our brokerage with the Real Estate Council of Ontario and an after with our local board. And while all of this was going on at once, uh, we also spoke to a corporate lawyer, you know, especially being in a partnership Uh, The lawyer created, so if anybody's thinking about it, the lawyer will create a very thorough partnership agreement. Honestly, it's, it's like a marriage. This is honestly like your prenup. It was crazy because you have to think about all these difficult and, you know, scenarios that you never think you're going to be in. And, you know, what are you going to do if it does happen? So, you know, God forbid one of us wants out of the business or somebody passes away, or maybe you don't 
agree on something and you know what's the process for that what does that look like how do you move forward so the partnership agreement was very important and our lawyer definitely gave us a lot of different options uh, so that's something that we did spend a bit of time on also getting our company getting incorporated as well uh, what else what else did we do oh you're going to want to speak to an accountant so we did um you know get an accountant that will give you a lot of information you know how do you want to set up your book so they're really going to help you through it and give you advice on what you should do you know even things on well if you get a commission are we leaving our commissions in the company are we pulling those out should we put ourselves on payroll so all these things that you may not think about or consider uh location like i said so one of the things we knew we wanted an office space so we had to you know get a lease we were lucky enough that we secured a, a sublease we knew you know again being a new brokerage you don't know how much space you're really going to need and we wanted to have enough space that if we grew we wouldn't outgrow the space right away so it was perfect for us we are in a space for for sure the next two years which perfect it's not too long uh, i feel like the space we can renew at that point but for now, um, yeah, so we secured the location. It was, you know, a good price. And like I mentioned, all the furniture was all included. So we didn't really have to buy anything but decor and paint the office and uh, bring in some tech. So that's something as well, you know, in case agents do come to the office, we wanted to be prepared for them. So we do have computers. We have a deal room set up. Uh, our board room is set up as well. So we could do hybrid meetings. So that was one thing that we had to take care of as well, you know, sort of while we were opening our brokerage and getting things ready. And I think our value proposition and our vision, which I suppose is part of the business plan, but we really wanted to have a clear idea of what our vision was for the brokerage. Um, you know, our value proposition, what do we have to offer agents and what our values were. So I think those were a lot of the things that we really focused on uh, while we were prepping to open up. Right. Well, thank you. The, um, you know, it's, it's interesting with regards to location, right. And, and where you want to be situated in a town or city and how big the office should be like, and I'm always having discussions and people are always like, should I go, you know, 1200 square feet? So I'm, it's, so I'm good for now, or should I get 3,500 square feet or 3000? Again, you know, we're talking lower mainland because I want to grow to hundred agents or 150 agents. And there's always that, you know, do you build something huge and, you know, and then hopefully, you know, able to fill it over the two years, or do you do something that's smaller and then move to accommodate your growth down the road? So it's, it's, you've taken that route and it's, it's great advice because that is always kind of a hard thing for people to think about is what, you know, what space, how much space do they take for their office? Definitely. And I think one thing for us is I don't want to say it's maybe a little too big, but we've really maximized the space that we have. So we have drop-in space. So if agents just want to come in and use an office, there is a couple free offices. One of the offices we turned into a media room. So we have a green screen. We have, you know, all the lights. We have the technology so that they can just come in and do video if they would like. We have another office that we're using as sort of like a storage room where we have um generic century 21 open house signs we have staging items uh things like that we actually even also have a toy room so you know for agents coming in with if they're coming into work and they have young children or if clients are coming in they have kids you know we have a room where you can keep the kids busy while the adults are you know doing business so we've really learned how to maximize the space that we have Oh, that's a great idea. Never heard any of the brokerages having a toy room. So that's, a, I think that's a great idea. Um, and Julie, you know, the other thing that I get asked a lot is about this decision, whether to go in a partnership together, mm -hmm. right with someone else. So whether it's siblings, you know, a brother or sister that you might be thinking about partnering with your parents, um, your children sometimes, or again, you know, a good colleague, a friend, anything like that. What do you think is key to making a business partnership work well? communication and trust <laughs> just like any other relationship you know friendship and marriage if you don't have those two things your partnership isn't going to last um you know you always need to keep those lines of communication open in order to solve problems or sometimes you need to have those difficult and uncomfortable discussions so you need to be able to you know to talk to one another 
And trust, a lot of times we are doing decisions together, but sometimes one of us may be put in a position where we have to make that immediate decision, whether it's in regards to finance or maybe an agent or something like that. And we need to be able to trust the other person to make the best decision on behalf of the brokerage. So definitely right. communication and trust. Communication and trust. So that's definitely a kind of words of wisdom you'd give to, you know, someone who is thinking about partnering. And, you know, I think having the agreement and having the lawyer go through and make sure that you have a really solid uh, partnership agreement. And then, of course, making sure that, you know, you have that open uh, means of communication. And and as you say, trusting each other to make a spontaneous decision if that's mm-hmm. what has to be done, right? You're really empowering each other to make, to make the decisions. Anything else? Words of wisdom? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. So I think your your vision and values definitely have to be aligned. Without that, I don't think any partnership will last because each partner is taking an active interest in the other while working together to de- develop shared success. Uh, so you need to have that balanced commitment and investment right from each party. And I think, again, with your partnership agreement is defining your roles as well ahead of time. You know, for us, you know, we're coming from a background where I was a non-selling manager and Tasha did sell. So we're coming in knowing that, yeah, there I'm probably going to be spending more time at the office than Tasha in some days or weeks. But we we knew that, you know, that was defined coming into this relationship, coming into this partnership. And I can see if you don't have those roles defined and responsibilities ahead of time, that resentment can, you know, can grow pretty quickly. So make sure you have that done. I would also suggest if it's somebody you're partnering up that you never work with to be very careful because you don't know what somebody's work ethic or lack thereof um, really is. So if you could partner up with somebody that you've worked in in some capacity, I think uh, that you're, you're probably off to a better start. And luckily, Tasha and I had worked together for, I think, the better part of about three years. And uh, we knew that we worked well together. And we knew that we had different strengths. So I think that's important too, because if you both have the same strengths, like that's great. But right now we have different things that we're good at. So we're able to bounce off of each other, which has been working really well so far. Great. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I watch you on social media and you two like look like you, you know, you're having so much fun and you work so well together. So I'm so excited, of course, about to see your success as you move forward. Um, So, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out this partnership, right? Figure out people's, you know, each other's roles. You're meeting with accountants, you're meeting with lawyers, you're meeting with the bank, you're trying to go find a location. What is your biggest fear that's going through your head at this point? Oh gosh, we open the doors and nobody wants to join our brokerage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that was real. And then coming with that was, okay, nobody comes and now we can't pay our bills. But really it was, oh my gosh, what if nobody joins us? What if nobody wants to come to our brokerage? <laughs> and so how did, how did you get over that fear? Like you're thinking, oh my gosh, like if I do all this, take this big, you know, really commitment, um, you know, how did you just, you know, how did you mentally get over that fear? Um, You know what? It was all in the mindset. We knew we were building something great. We knew with the Century 21 brand behind us and our experience that we had a lot to offer to agents. So we had to shift our mindset. And so we quickly went to, you know what, let's just build it and they will come. And I have to say I'm a strong believer in a law of attraction. What you put out there, you get back in return. And you know what? We had that mindset. And in a very short period of time, we were able to recruit, you know, a lot of our agents. So luckily it all worked out for us. Yes, you did. You you built it and they came because you're going <laughs> to hopefully have 12 by the end of today. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so one of the things that you talked about that you also had to do and also that what was important to you when you're opening your own brokerage was, you know, having a franchise brand, being part of a franchise brand. I know you reached out to a number of different organizations. You decided to affiliate with Century 21. What's the process that you went through in order to determine what brand you want to affiliate with? Well, first thing we did, we had to look at our existing market and just see what franchises were already out there. Some of the franchises already had, you know, a couple offices uh, in our city and some of them have exclusive rights to the territory, uh, the territory. But what we did is we definitely reached out to uh, a handful of brands and we set up appointments. And I wish that we, I could say that we had some sort of checklist that we followed, 
but really we just wanted to hear everybody out. We knew for one thing, we knew support and technology was important and we wanted to be with a company that was forward thinking in technology. Um, so those were things that we were kind of, you know, listening for, but basically, yeah, we just called all the brands and we just heard them out. Um, and yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that, that's good. So you, of course, made a decision to go with Century 21 and we thank yeah. you for that. Um, so how did, why did you make the decision to actually end up affiliating with Century 21? Well, we knew, again, we wanted to move with the brand that was constantly innovating and that we could form a positive and long lasting relationship with. And the excellent response and support we received from head office, you know, were unmatched by, honestly, any other brand that we spoke with. Uh, from the start, we spoke with Gary Zalepa, and he was really transparent. You know, he seemed really honest and personable. I mean, I don't know how he really is in, in real life. No, he's, but... <laughs> he's, he's like that in real life. He's like I that in real life. Yeah. We met him in St. John's, and honestly, he was really great. Yes. So yes. Our, our first meeting, Gary actually walked us through all of the different Century 21 platforms and uh, tools that you had to offer. And I don't think any other brand did that. They wanted to wait to make sure we were serious or showed more interest. But Gary, like I said, was totally transparent, went through everything. Um, he was available to answer all of our questions. And we were so impressed with the tech and the training platforms that Century 21 had to offer. Um, I think that pretty much showed us right there and then. But we also love the rebrand. You know, it's so sleek and modern. It looks really great. And I think one thing that we love, because this is something that we did not have with the other brokerage that we worked with, was that Century 21 is the global, uh, global brand and that we knew that we would have an international reach, which, again, we didn't have access to before. So really, everything combined was just a no-brainer for us. Well, that's that's just wonderful. Um, what was your biggest challenge you've been you were with a brokerage for a number of years right and then you decided to make that difficult decision to start your own brokerage you decided to affiliate with century 21 um what were the biggest challenges in making that transition um i think that one of the biggest challenges again you know i just said how century 21 has so many great tools and resources and platforms was learning all of them it was a lot. And when you're trying to sell something to new agents, you know, come to our brand because this is what we offer and you're not quite comfortable yet or know everything that's offered to you. That was a little bit challenging, but luckily, you know, the agents were very understanding and patient with us. So over time, we sort of learned all the tools, some of us together. And the other thing that was challenging is, you know, we do not hire staff uh, out of the gate. So you are now a new brokerage owner running, you know, a business trying to do it all. So you're trying to, you know, recruit agents, you are processing paperwork, you are working on a website and doing all the social media posts, you're even cleaning the office. So it was a lot, you know, it was really a balancing act, which now, you know, we're kind of getting in the flow and into routine, but it definitely was challenging at first because it was a lot all at once. So what do you think some of the key areas are that you needed to focus on? You know, we say at Century 21, when we're doing our business planning, um, you know, at the end of the year for the next year, we say we have the, we have the must haves, the should haves and the could haves and the must haves have to be done, you know? So what are some of those key areas that you need to focus, like really focus on in order to open your brokerage? Other than the things you discuss, location and things like that. Is yeah, there anything we um, haven't talked about? You know what? I think I've touched base on most of them, but yep. it was really developing that value proposition. And I'll be honest, we definitely didn't do everything perfectly. We sort of, we did have a value proposition, but we're working on having like a very thorough one right now. But I think that's really important is that value proposition, because that's what's going to track your, the agents over. So if anything that I recommend to anybody who's planning on opening a brokerage, really focus on that value proposition. Great. Well, that's a great tip. Um, so you went from, and again, now that you've opened your own brokerage, you've considered all these things. You went for, again, working as a managing broker for a number of years into owning your own brokerage. What, how is that different? How is being a managing broker different than owning your own brokerage? <laughs> Tell me how that feels and how, how that's changed for you. Um, it definitely feels great. You know, you're building something from the ground up, something that you can be proud of. Um, you know, it's something really special. 
um, you know, you're making your own decisions. You can implement whatever you want. Nobody can really say no. So you really get to do it the way you want to do it. And you are definitely more vested. I, when I worked at the other brokerage, I always said, you know, I, I am working, I am treating this as if it's my own. But now that I actually have my own brokerage, there's a lot more pressure because, you know, didn't matter before. I, I still got paid no matter what. But now, you know, if I'm not recruiting, if, you know, the agents aren't happy, you know, we're not getting paid. The agents, you know, we're not, there's a lot of factors. There's definitely more pressure. But I mean, the reward is even greater when you own your own brokerage. And I know that you said that, you know, you did have the opportunity to possibly you know, open or, you know, manage an existing brokerage, or of course, start your own brokerage. Mm -hmm. Tell, you know, and that I'm sure that's a, you know, that's a decision people are thinking about all the time, you know, should I should I start my own brokerage? Or should I actually buy an existing brokerage? So why did you decide to start your own brokerage versus taking over an, an existing brokerage? Um, well, a couple of reasons. I think one thing we have to consider, obviously it didn't work out with that brokerage, but if we were going to consider maybe purchasing another existing brokerage, um, most of the times there'd be a share purchase, you know, versus an asset purchase. So when you're doing an asset purchase, you know, as a buyer, you can say, okay, well, I just want to buy the furniture from your office. I want to buy, you know, sort of the staff and agents, and you're not taking on the liabilities. But I, and I could be wrong, but I think when you are purchasing most real estate brokerages, you're doing a share purchase, which means you are taking over that company. So all of the assets, but you're also taking over the liabilities and obligations and consequently, you know, inheriting perhaps any problems. So this could mean you're inheriting any ongoing lawsuits, any debt, uh, you know, any maybe potential is issues with the CRA. If once you purchase and the CRA decides to do an audit with for your books four years ago, you could be on the hook for those. So, you know, that's a little bit scary to think about, especially if you aren't, you know, intimate with the company and with the books and you don't know what's been going on. So that can be a little bit scary to inherit all those liabilities. Um, so that was one reason. And then again, just being prepared to take that next step to start something from the ground up and being able to put, you know, my vision to life and to get to create also the culture that we wanted. Um, you know, choosing the type of people we wanted to surround ourselves with at the brokerage. So I think that was something that, you know, you don't get when you buy an existing company. Right. So how did you and Tasha decide on what type of culture that you want to create within your brokerage? Uh, so it all went back to our vision and values. So our goal for the future of the brokerage was and always has been to grow the office with like-minded realtors who focus on client care and do business with integrity. And, uh, you know, we want to keep building a team who are open to collaboration and cooperation, uh, working together to reach goals personally and professionally. Um, so that being in our vision, it's, you know, anybody who would come in a door, we had to say, you know, are they gonna, do they fit that? Do they fit that vision? Are they going to fit in with the other agents in the office as well? And so far, you know, our culture has been all about that. So to give you an example, Tasha did a training a few weeks ago about uh, finishing the year strong and putting out a 12 week challenge. And a lot of our agents jumped on board, you know, on our agent Facebook group, they're posting, you know, what their goals are for the week or for the next 12 weeks and sharing their resources. Like, this is what I do to keep track. And this is my spreadsheet. And if you guys want it. So everybody's very collaborative and open and uh, there to really support each other, I think. And um, like I said, sometimes, you know, building culture, you may have to turn an agent away that doesn't fit that because it could be detrimental to your culture. Mm -hmm. And that's, trust me, I know that's a very difficult thing to do when you're a new brokerage or a small brokerage that is growth oriented because we did have to turn somebody away this year. Um, but you need to keep your existing agents happy. You know, it, they say recruiting is, important but in my mind retention is just as important if not more important because if you don't have happy agents they're not going to stay at your brokerage but if you keep them happy and they feel like they have a say in building that culture then they become your biggest advocates absolutely and I think that you it, it's key as you say is that it's very hard as you say for a new brokerage owner to turn someone down if they don't 
you know, if they're not aligned with the culture, but as I say, like a bad apple can upset the Mm -hmm. apple cart, right? And so, as you say, one person can just make the whole organization unhappy. (laughs) We know that. I'm sure all of us know that. (laughs) So let's talk a little bit about your value proposition. How did you decide what that value proposition was and how are you going to differentiate your brokerage from other brokerages in your market? Um, you know, obviously I have the support on everyone. I feel like everybody thinks they have the best support. They probably do, you know, uh, for us, you have Tasha and I, we're both very awesome, but, <laughs> <laughs> but part of our value proposition was how can we add or give more value to the agents without, you know, sort of like charging them, you know, if you want to get this done, we're charging you X amount. We wanted that to be sort of included in the franchise fee and the fees they pay every month. So we have, uh, like I said, the toy room. I think we're probably the only ones in our city who do have that because we do promote a work-life balance. You know, it's easy to get run down in this business or especially, um, you know, women or even men who have young children and they find it hard to work from home. Well, now they can come to the office. They can work. They have a room to keep their kids entertained. So, you know, we have um, also, like I said, we have staging items that can mm-hmm. agents can sign out at no cost. We have a media room where agents also have access to the uh, the iSpy, the 360 camera. So they can sign that out, go do a 3D tour or uh, 360 yep. tour, sorry. Yeah. And uh, send us the pictures and we take care of doing the tour for the agents. Um, You know, we provide leads as well. I think that's a big thing that agents, especially we have, you know, quite a few newer agents within the brokerage or have been in the business for less than five years. So providing them with leads as well, I think is something that helps to differentiate us a little bit because I know a lot of brokerages, they have to pay for their own lead packages. And also offering a blended work environment. So we are all set up for doing hybrid meetings, hybrid training Um, with Century 21, you know, they maybe can't access our training, you know, that day while they can go on a Century 21 platforms and there's tons of training there at their disposal. Um, So just being able to offer these things again without charging above and beyond for every single thing that they use. Right. It's like this all inclusive package, right? It's completely turnkey, especially for new realtors, right? It's like, you know, that all the stuff that you provide, in addition to all the stuff that Century 21 provides, the technology, the tools, the resources, the training, you know, makes for a wonderful, um, you know, combination. So let's talk a little bit about moving forward. Um, As we say, we hope, fingers crossed, that you have 12 agents by the end of today. What are your growth goals um, looking forward to the next years and to the next year into 2023? Because I know that we're, you can talk about your goals for 2022. um, And how are you going to achieve them? Have you put some thought to to that? We have. So our first year goal or target was to have a brokerage with 20 agents. So we still have about three months to go to recruit eight more. Um, But that was our first year goal. And um, what we've done recently, I I mean, yes, we were doing calls, uh, nothing really structured. So we actually, within the last month, decided to hire a coach. So, you know, just to kind of give us a little bit more structure, help us implement systems, um, keep us accountable as well. So, you know, we are, uh, of course, we're doing calls, we're doing handwritten notes. Um, We have, you know, agents that we've targeted as well on the Moxie recruiting campaign as well. So we are doing those steps, but with us, we're just starting to get into like a consistent pattern um, of doing those things. So I think if we stay on track um, and, you know, still stay consistent, that hopefully we'll be able to hit our goal for 2022. I guess our first year will be ending in February 2023. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Of course, it's your first year being open, right? Yes. (laughs) Not the end of this year. Um, You know, I I, I like that too, because then, you know, our our C21 Engage for recruiting creates that that keep in touch campaign for your recruits. So if you create that workflow and if you're organized to, you know, to make sure that, you know, your contacts are going in the system, then that kind of automates itself. And then you can actually take the time to, as you say, make those handwritten notes, you know, pick up the phone and call your agents, continue to nurture um, the relationships that you do have out there. Yes, 
So as you look forward, because obviously you've given some thought to it, as you've looked forward, what do you think the biggest opportunity moving forward is for you? And what are you doing to capitalize on that opportunity? Well, I have to say this year, I don't know if I want it to call to call this year the year of change or the year of movement, but we have never seen so many agents change brokerages, you know, within the last year. Uh, we've had a lot of new brokerages open up cloud-based brokerages, you know, come on our board, um, different business models. We've had also two of the bigger brokerages in Subway come under new ownership. So I feel like agents are, I don't know if they're being less complacent, but they're looking at what their options are now, obviously with all the movement we've seen. And I think there is a big opportunity there for us to recruit those agents. Like I said, I think agents are now looking for more and being an all-inclusive brokerage, we have that to offer. So I think moving forward, that is going to be uh, an opportunity for us to recruit more agents. Great. So we talked a lot about everything you had to do and you, you, you were super busy leading up to opening your brokerage earlier this year and you've been super busy as since then. So if you were to do this all over again, <laughs> would you do anything differently or you're like, nope, everything was good. Um, you know, all the decisions I made, everything, all the steps I took, you know, everything was exactly how I do it again. Or is there some lessons learned there? Um, yeah, I think definitely lessons learned. I've, I've been thinking about this all week. I'm like, oh, what would I change? Is there anything? I'm sure there are. We definitely did not do everything perfectly, not even close. But I think the things that maybe we did do right or maybe could have done better, like you said, it's, it's a learning experience. You're learning from what you could have done better. It's like, okay, well, we did it this way. Now we know we're going to do it this way moving forward. So the whole thing has been <laughs> yeah, big learning experience. And to do it all over again, you know what? I don't think I'd change a thing. Well, that's great. And reflecting back so reflect back over the last year or so um what do you think has been your biggest success over the past year if someone said to you you know julie what are you most proud of in this past year what would that be definitely opening our doors but i'm gonna say getting it done in such a short period of time okay. um, i think we started probably beginning of January, sort of looking into, okay, like we're going to open our own brokerage. What does that look like? We need to make calls. And we got everything done from, you know, securing the franchise to doing our partnership agreement, uh, setting up our books, uh, securing our location and getting the lease written up. Uh, we did that in, I think, a matter of about four weeks. Wow. So it was very, very quickly. And uh, I'm super proud that we were able to pull it off. Well, that, that is a big success. <laughs> So what are some tips you'd give someone if they want to open their own brokerage, if they've been thinking about it? And, um, you know, what are some tips that you would give them? Definitely make sure you are doing it for the right reasons. Don't do it because, you know, you think you're going to get rich because uh, that may never happen. I mean, who knows? Uh, <laughs> we're only about eight months in, so we'll see. But really, it is a labor of love. It's a people business. It's not about you anymore. It's about others. You're here to guide, you're here to lead, you're here to help, um, you know, lead your realtors to a better life, a better business. So it's, it's really not about you anymore. And just make sure you do your research. You need to know what you're getting into. Um, don't be afraid, you know, reach out to head office. You have really great resources there. Don't be afraid to reach out to also our Century 21 network, you know, where a lot of new uh, franchise owners, I think just this year, and I'm sure everybody is more than happy to share their experiences, what they've learned along the way, and maybe give you tips and advice on what you can do moving forward. So definitely do your research and know what you're getting into. Well, you know, and that's, you just sum up the C21 culture, right? It's all about support and collaboration and sharing best practices and sharing experiences. So I think that's a really good uh, tip. Last question. What is the biggest challenge that you've ever faced in your life? It doesn't have to be in the, you know, when you've been in the real estate industry that ended up as a blessing in disguise. Just because this one is recent, um, is obviously everything that happened with not being able to purchase, you know, the brokerage that I worked at previously. Um, you know, it was heartbreaking to me when that all happened. Um, you know, I was close to the owner of that business as well. And 
you know, I had never thought I would leave that brokerage. But to be honest, it's it's been a blessing because I wouldn't be here today with you, Chioko, if that didn't happen. And being with the Century 21 brand, I mean, the brand is amazing. Um, I never knew there were such great tools out there. I think I was a little bit biased before, but the tools and training doesn't even compare. And just being grateful that I was able to build something of my own, I think is really special. So that's really been a blessing. It's something that I am proud of and hope that I can do for many years to come. So it ended up, you know, working out. I'm a strong believer that everything happens for a reason. So clearly, you know, that wasn't meant to be, but this is so. So Julie, we are so proud to have you and Tasha as part of the C21 family. I think, you know, you just bring, you've been, bring so much life to the network. You know, we had a chance to spend some time in St. John's, Newfoundland at our national conference and just love your personality and love your positive attitude. And we really appreciate you at choosing Century 21. Well, thank you. So if someone wants to ask you some more questions about opening your own brokerage, as you say, you're very supportive and, um, you, you know, of course, you'd be happy to answer questions. How can people get a hold of you? Uh, either call me on my cell, 705-920-3516, or send me an email, julie.robert at century21.ca. Great. Uh, absolutely. Julie.robert at century21.ca. Julie, again, thank you so much for being part of this podcast and sharing your experiences uh, with us today. Thank you very much, Joko. So you're either listening to this podcast live or listening it uh, to the recording on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, or you went to the Mm century21franchise.ca website. Century 21 is one of the world's largest residential real estate brands in the world with presence in 86 countries. Here in Canada, we are 11,000 plus strong, and we're looking to align ourselves with like-minded individuals like Julie, um, who share the same vision to what the future of brokerages look like. So if you're interested in growth opportunities, please feel free to reach out to me or my colleague, Gary Zaleppa. You can reach us both through the century21franchise.ca website, or you can connect with me through LinkedIn or Facebook, and we can set up a chat. Anyways, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. And thanks, Julie, for being with us today.